Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are all doing really, really well. So a little disclaimer, I am wearing a shirt. It <laughs> just like, the camera just cut off like perfectly, like right there, like perfectly right here. So I am wearing a shirt. I don't know where this shirt is from, but it's really cute because it's like those like off the shoulder shirts that like hang off the shoulder. Um, I'll find out where it's from and I'll put the link down below, but I am wearing a shirt. I just want to do a disclaimer just in case it looks like I am wearing nothing. So that's besides the point. Um, but today I wanted to do a makeup tip video. I kind of want to start this on my channel like maybe like once a week or something like that where I give a makeup tip that I have, you know, you know, learned from someone else or that I have read online and we try it out and see if it works. Or just makeup tips that I do on my face um, to get like a flawless face or just any type of beauty tips. I kind of want to start doing this on my channel so I thought I would start it off with giving you guys tips on how to avoid a cakey face. Listen honey, like we are all victims of cakey face, like it's true, like everyone has dealt with it. Like having a cake face, having your pores like really like exposed and stuff, like it just happens sometimes. Like no matter what you do sometimes, like your skin just doesn't take the makeup properly and it can start to look cakey and it really really sucks when you have cake face because it makes you not even want to, you know, wear makeup anymore because you just feel like no matter what products you use or like anything like that you're just gonna look cakey and like it just looks bad when you have a cake face like it just doesn't look good so today I wanted to do a video and give you guys some tips on how to avoid a cake face so on this side of my face I did my makeup using the techniques that I use on an everyday basis to avoid a cake face because literally I used to be the queen of cake face like I I don't know how but like out of nowhere like I just started being really cakey with my makeup and my makeup just was not like applying flawlessly it just looked really really bad and people would always call me out on that like saying that I had really cakey like nose and stuff so I you know watched a ton of videos like trying to see how to get rid of cake face reading about it online and then also doing my own you know trial and error and seeing what worked for me so on this side of my face I did the techniques that worked for me to avoid me having a cake face like this side looks flawless right now except for this little pimple that I didn't want to cover up because it's like on the verge of like dying so I don't want to put any product on that but besides that like this side looks very very well put together and then on this side I did you know things that you're supposed to try to avoid and that you should not do if you want to get rid of cake face so as you can see like you can tell the difference a little bit like the eye makeup is the same but like the face like here I put a lot of highlight on the apples of my cheek like some people like to do which looks really really pretty on camera like if the light hits it properly, it looks really, really pretty. You just get like a nice little glare and glisten. But in person, trust me, like putting highlight on the apples of your cheek, just, it just makes your pores stand out a lot. So yeah, on this side, I did the makeup don't if you want to have a cakey face. And then over here, I did, you know, the tips that you should do if you want to avoid it. So yeah, I hope you guys like this video. I hope these techniques work out for you and if you have any other techniques or tips on how to avoid cake face make sure to leave them down below so that everyone can you know just gather as many tips as possible and try to you know fix the problem and yeah that's pretty much all I have to say and let's just get right into this video okay so it's really important to moisturize your skin so on one side of my face I'm gonna be doing like all the stuff that I do to avoid a cakey face so I'm going to moisturize just this half of my face. I use a Bobbi Brown one, but it's super important to moisturize because if you don't, your skin is just going to be bare face. It's just going to be naked, and when you apply the product onto, like, a naked face, you're just directly applying the product into your skin. There's no, like, layer or base in between. So that's why I feel like it's really important to moisturize your skin before. Also, your makeup is just going to apply much more smoother and much more gentle and, like, more flawlessly when you have a moisturizing and hydrated base. So then I also like to prep my skin using max fix plus you can just take any setting spray and just it's important to just set your face so on this side of my face I'm going to be using this primer which I really really don't like it's a smashbox primer I'll link everything down below but it's supposed to be getting rid of pores but I have found that this primer doesn't really do a good job of getting rid of my pores and it honestly like makes my face really cakey like anytime I apply makeup over it I just feel like my makeup looks so bad with this primer and I'm also showing you guys how the makeup is going to look when I don't apply moisturizer because I didn't apply the Bobbi Brown moisturizer on this side of my face or the Max Fix Plus I just went right ahead and just primed my skin without moisturizing it so you'll see kind of the difference between how it looks when you don't moisturize or prep so on the other side, I'm going to be using the Hourglass Veil Primer. I think that's what it's called. This primer is amazing. It's just honestly makes your face look like very angelic when you blend it out. I just really, really love this primer. It's so pretty. So I just like, after I moisturize and then put the prep on my skin, 
I just like to go over it with this primer and it just like is a perfect base for your makeup when you have already a moisturizer, a prep, and a primer. An alternate primer is this Revlon Photo Ready one. That one's really, really good too if you can't like, you know, invest in the other one. Um, and then for foundation, you want to use a very lightweight foundation. You don't want to use a flat top brush. You want to use a beauty blender to apply it. And when I apply my foundation, I apply it on the outer edges of my face first. And I leave the inside of my face bare because that's where your pores are. That's where people tend to look cakey is on the inner parts of their face. Um, I tend to look cakey like right there in the inner part by my nose and by where my pores are. So if I apply product directly onto the apples of my cheek and onto my nose and onto like where my pores are, it's just going to look so cakey and the product is just going to sit there and not blend smoothly. So that is why I apply it on the outside of my face and then blend inward so not a lot of product goes on in there. And as you can see, it just looks very flawless and you don't really need that much product in the inner part. So for on this side, um, I'm going to be... I'm going to be taking two heavy, like, full coverage foundations. This one is the Tarte one, and then this one is a Clinique 2-in-1 concealer and foundation. Um, if you have, like, cakey face or big pores, you might not want to use, like, a full coverage foundation. Um, not all the time. Like, maybe for an everyday basis, just use a light one, and maybe for, like, a party or something, you might want to do this one. But, like, I tend to avoid heavy foundations. And also, like, people just make the mistake of applying the product directly onto where I told you guys before, like, where your pores are, on the side of your nose, under your eyes, and then they use like a buffing technique, which I feel like that makes it, your makeup just look really, really bad. Like, I used to do this, and that's when I started looking cakey, is I would just like buff it into my skin. Just keep moving the product around, and then like, the, I noticed the more that I buffed, the more that I irritated my skin, and then like, my pores would just like, really really pop out and then it would just look really bad the foundation and just look very cakey and also since you're keep buffing it out you keep shearing it out so the more you shear it out like the less like your face is going to be covered so then I feel like you just keep reapplying makeup and makeup over and over again because you just keep shearing it out and you're just not getting like the coverage you want as if you're using a beauty blender you're just like bouncing it onto your skin and you're not really moving it anywhere but with like a buffer and a buffing brush, you're just like buffing it and spreading it around your face. So I just feel like this just makes you want to keep applying more and more product because you keep sharing it out. And I just feel like it does not blend as smoothly as like a beauty blender and it's just going to lay on your skin. And it's just not going to look flawless. So I don't know. As you can see, it didn't really cover up that pimple right there. So I had to keep applying makeup. And then the more makeup you apply and the more layers you have, the cakier it's going to be. So for concealer, you want to use a very lightweight concealer. I like this one from Urban Decay. I have tried literally every concealer in the market because my under eyes just tend to get really cakey like fast and it tends to break away the makeup throughout the day. And this foundation, I mean this concealer just works really well. So when I apply my concealer, I usually leave like a gap between my lower lash line and where I applied my concealer right now because if I apply it directly underneath my lower lash line it's just gonna sit into my wrinkles that I have there and I'm just gonna keep pushing it into my wrinkles and it's just gonna make my under eyes not look very flawless or very like blended out because it's just gonna be laying on my wrinkles and I also don't apply it like I said by my nose or where my pores are I just apply it on the outside and then blend inward again and just take my time with this and make sure everything is nice and blended um, I also do not bake baking is like the death of me if I bake I'm just asking for like dry under eyes and very cakey under eyes. So I just take a little bit of powder on a damp beauty blender and I just lightly press it underneath my eyes. I do not let it sit there for a long time because the more I let it sit there, I just notice that like the drier my under eyes look and then the drier your under eyes look, the cakier and like less like put together your makeup is going to look. So it's just very important to not bake if you deal with cake face, big pores and dry under eyes. So on the other side, I'm going to be using this concealer. I don't really like this concealer that much. I used to love it, but I don't know. I just prefer the Urban Decay one now. But people make the mistake of just doing like a huge triangle, putting the, the concealer against their nose, putting it on their pores, and then baking. And it's just like so much product that you just keep piling on that it just keeps being like a cake. Like you just keep putting layer after layer. So that is a mistake that I used to do all the time. And I used to like just do a huge triangle and then I would bake and then like literally my under eyes look disgusting and it's just horrible. So for a blush, um, I use this one from Becca. I like it a lot. It's really, really good. It does not like move my makeup a lot. So when I apply blush or bronze or anything, I just do it on the out parts 
of my cheek like on the outer side because I notice if I put it directly on the apples of my cheek like how some people are taught to do I'm just putting it directly on like my pores and if you put product directly on your pores you're just asking to make them like stand out and asking people to look at them because there's like product there so I just start on the outside I just feel like it looks more natural and then like whatever is left on my brush I'll like lightly dust it on like the inner part of my cheek but I just feel like it looks way more natural when you just have nothing right there and like I don't know I just feel like it's too much and the same thing for highlighter I know a lot of people like to put highlighter on the apples of their cheek it does look really really pretty I just tend to avoid that because it's just gonna make your pores stand out again and if you just keep putting a bunch of product like in the center of your face I don't know I just feel like it looks really cakey and these are all the things that I do now to avoid a cake face because I used to do all the other stuff. And when I do the other stuff, I would always look really cakey. People would point it out. My boyfriend would point it out. So I'm just saying what I have experienced and my tips. Um, but yeah, so now I'm just taking away the baking powder. And I wish the camera like would have picked this up more because my under eyes were super dry and my wrinkles were like literally standing out so much. So that's why I just tend to avoid baking. And then now I'm just going to show you guys how it looks like when you apply, you know, blush and highlighter onto the apples of your cheek and how, like, unnatural and how much texture it gives you. It honestly gives you a lot of texture. So as you can see, like, I put the blush on the apples of my cheek and blended backwards. And I also put the highlight on the apples of my cheek and blended backwards. And as you can see, it just looks like there's so much texture there. Even though it does look pretty when the light hits you, like, you can tell there's a lot of texture there and that's what makes it look cakey is when there's just a lot of like bumps and like weird weirdness going on <laughs> so now this is like my last technique is like on the part of your nose right there in the crease where it tends to get cakey and a lot of product I like to just take a buffing brush and just buff it out and that just helps spread the product out a little bit more and not make it like all bunched up and look a lot cakey on the sides of your nose and that is it for this video um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down below if you guys have any other, you know, tips to get rid of cakey face or what you guys like to do to get rid of a cakey face. And also give this video a thumbs up if you want more videos on, like, you know, avoiding a cakey face, how to do makeup for acne since I have a lot of acne, how to do makeup for that, like, just any type of videos that, you know, have to do with, you know, having a flawless face. Let me know if you want more videos like that. And, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.